computer and here we go well here we are again man we're cranking out these episodes like crazy well approximately once a week um my name is frank mcdonough from the archie coach cast i'm here joined with co-founder richard doc mccune from the international archery institute the director of curriculum and everything archery knowing larry wise and then one of our <laughs> new instructors and uh, extremely popular compound and recurve coach, Coach Linda Beck, who's joined us now for like three in a row. So you're, technically, Linda, you're a guest. You're the first repeat guest that we have had. I hope you're oh, honored. Okay. Yes. Wow. I hope you are honored. <laughs> Great status. I know, right? Yeah. Um, so today we're talking about, we're going to get right to it. We're not, we're not messing around. We had all the, the small talk, but I mean, Larry, congratulatory golf clap on you becoming a grandfather i know we've been talking about that a little bit do you want to fill everyone in real quick of where your life's going here shortly okay so i have one grandson who's 11 my daughter's son out in illinois he plays hockey but my son and his wife are expecting twins and uh she's uh, going to be 25 weeks this wednesday and we didn't know whether they were boys or girls, they're going to be identical. We know that, but we didn't know boys or girls until Thursday night. And they had decided on the names finally. And so we're getting two, <clears throat> two boys. Outstanding. Yeah. yeah, James Wyatt and Zachary James. Oh. So they'll carry the, oh, the, James. the James moniker like the rest oh. of us down from my dad, so. Yeah. Yep, we're, we're excited. Congratulations, Larry. That's, that's great uh -huh. for you, Diana. Um, all right. Well, once again, we're gonna we're gonna talk about posture today. We we alluded to it a little bit last week. Posture and that part of the process. Um, the stage is yours, there, Coach Wise. Have at it. Okay. Um, I'll I'll start with this. Uh, uh, I watched some football and uh, watched some playoff games, etc. And there was one place kicker that I noted from all of them that you see, college or pros, but one place kicker, I think he's the guy for um, uh, the Texans. And so he did his step back from the ball, from the, where the ball was going to be placed, three steps back, two steps left. Then you set your posture to be ready to take your steps to kick the ball. But he is the only one who made absolutely certain that he set his back, his shoulders, and his head position each and every time. Everybody else sets their posture and, and they're kind of loosey goosey, but he is setting his back, shoulders and head. And it's very distinct. And uh, so what's the advantage? Well, the advantage is when you set your back, shoulders and head position the same, then you are more likely to end up kicking the ball the same. If your head position is different on every kick or every shot, how can you expect to get the same result? So that places a premium on head position. And of course your head sits over top the rest of your body. So <laughs> you've got to start from the ground up. So, uh, and I know Linda works on that with, with both compound and recurve. So um, what, what do you do with your recurvers in particular, Linda? Well, you're right, Larry, work on it with both of them. And I'd say uh, for both, it starts with the stance and right. then making sure that your, uh, initially your shoulders are over your hips, over your feet in an open stance. The core is tight. The pelvis is rocked forward. So the, you have a nice flat back. Shoulders are down and back. And head is squarely on your shoulders and just turned to the target. 
And then as much as possible, hold that head position the same and keep that nice flat back and try not to be physically leaning in any direction, not behind away from the target, nor uh, sometimes when people think about the 60% weight on their balls of their feet at stance, they end up tipping forward and that's not it. You're still standing straight. You just have your weight forward mm -hmm. like any uh, lineman would in football or anyone else, their weights forward. But I think for me, the biggest thing I see is the lack of posture in compounds. They don't put any effort into it. And you see, and you see many of the top people, um, what I call throw their body weight when they draw, they're really throwing oh, their weight uh, to the back yeah. and then I, have to I was come back say to that. the same place. And some of them are extremely successful, but what I tell my students is, okay, yeah, that person is extremely successful. That's what they do for a living is shoot. So if you want to shoot five to seven days a week, every day, mm -hmm. you will be repeatable. Yeah. But if you don't have that time frame, and, and plus you're not going to leverage your body as well as you could, and you're in, you're uh, right. setting yourself up for risk. You're, um, you're setting yourself up for injury. So holding that head still is critical. And so one of the cues that I use once they've set their posture and they're going to draw is the spine's the center point with the head being the center of it over it. Yeah. You're going to draw pivoting around your the pole or your spine, whatever discipline it is, you're pivoting around the pole. And when mm -hmm. they get that in their head, they're more likely to stay straight and hold their posture. Right. Yes. Yeah. Set the core, yep. set your spine and the shoulders on the spine and your head at the top of the spine. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is indeed your, your core. And what we see for youth and, and Linda and I have worked with a lot of youth uh, back in our dream team days. <clears throat> and she's still continuing. You've got a red team camp coming up this week, you said. Yep. This weekend is coming, yeah. So with, with the youth, whose core muscles are not fully developed yet, it's really critical to have good posture. Uh, adults that you see doing all kinds of twerking and leaning, uh, tilting their head when they're drawing their bow, they have good solid core development already. You know, when you, once you got to age 20, 21, you know, your core muscles are very well developed, um, unless you've been a couch potato, <laughs> okay, and don't have that. Uh, but youth who are growing don't have that development. So good posture is critical from, like Linda said, from the ground up. And can you guys, so we, you know, Linda touched upon like, you know, it starts the foundation, it starts with the stance, which we've talked about in previous uh, episodes but can we talk about how that hollow back how that poor posture happens with the core area even in adults that have the ability what are they what what are the cues this is this is your this is your moment linda what are the cues that we use to fix that hollow back because that's part of the posture that oftentimes is missed by even maybe even some some coaching opportunities and not by because maybe they're not as much one-on-one -on -one activity in a group session for volunteer GLI coaches and stuff like that you know that's a popular thing that get, often gets missed How, what's a cue at, not only is what a what is a cue linda but also what is a common um thing that is missed that results in the hollow back so one of the things, and it's, I mean, it's in the national training system literature and others, and it's this, and Larry touched on it with stance a couple of weeks ago, and that was the pelvic, the pelvic tilt, where you're going to tip your pelvis, you're going to rock, probably have the wrong clothes on. You're good. But you're going to rock right here to tuck in okay. here, and that flattens the back. Well, good luck with getting a bunch of kids to do that. Right. Um even if you tell them to squeeze the quarter or 50 cent piece back there. Um, but another coach, when we were talking about this at a level four, which now in the level four, we introduced cueing, which is um, 
-hmm. There's a great book out there, like I mentioned before, Nick Winkleman's uh, Language of Coaching. But another coach came up with a good one and whenever possible, steal from other coaches. And I loved what he said. And it was, imagine that you just won that nice, big, shiny belt buckle. You got that big, shiny belt buckle on <laughs> and it's down here and you're getting ready to get your posture and you want to rock those help, help. You want to do that t t tilt there. Just step your head down and go, oh yeah, look at my shiny belt buckle. <laughs> so cool. And that's what you got to do. You just, whoop, there it is. Now hold that. Oh, there you go, shoot. Nice. And so that that's a and you just got to get experiment and look look for little stuff like that that's catchy they'll remember and they're going to remember that quicker and faster than anything else they're going to do and then then when you're coaching you can cut your language down quickly like if you see that their back is arching you don't have to go into a multi-word sentence on hey you need to rock your pelvis get your back flat it's like hey where's your belt buckle yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll just, oh yeah. And they'll do it. Or not even say anything at all and just do what you did. Make, make the belt buckle yeah, just and just make, show them the, the visual yep. and they know, oh yeah, that's right. Yep. Told me that the belt buckle, remember mm -hmm. the belt buckle. Oh, that's good. Yeah. The, and that's, I know the hollow back was an issue for me. Not so much when I shot Olympic and I don't know why it switched when I, I, I think it switched when I went to Barabo because I had this notion that my, that the arrow had to be underneath my eye and it, it put me in, in goofy positions. I'm maybe one of few that I try not to move my head at all in Barabo. And um, that's from what I've learned coming up through. And it, and it definitely works. I think there's this idea in Barabo that you have to look down, the arrow has to be under your eye. I don't even look at the arrow. I literally don't even look at the tip of the arrow. I'm only looking at the target because if I look at the arrow too much, I over aim. When I over aim, I get panicky. So mm -hmm. I, if I, the idea that it has to be underneath and I have to look down the arrow shaft, maybe for some instinctive shooters, they do that. But I do know, like I see the head movement and the hollow back a lot in Barbo, a ton. Mm -hmm. And I can't emphasize for people enough who, who follow me through the Barabo project and maybe some other things that if you try to like do what Linda said and you try to fix your posture and work on that alignment, the panic gets less and less and less and less and less and less and less to the point where it's just figuring out the timing of the aim and allowing the subconscious switch to letting the release happen. And that's that carries over to barebo without a doubt most people don't even draw to full draw they don't get to their full draw full expansion they don't they don't do it they cut it off because they're so in tune to having to try to look and tilt that head over and get underneath and when you are when you are moving that head out of position and you're starting to bend at your waist you're not going to have you're you're not going to have core engagement you're not going to be at full draw it's going to be very difficult and like, also, like Linda said, there are some people who can do it successfully in the barebow world, but it's probably because they shoot five, six days a week, or they've been doing it for 10, 15 years. Yeah. A new, new shooter or coaches working with new shooters, do what Linda said, teach them to stand up straight, teach them how to avoid that hollow back and make sure they're not moving their head coming in the draw. Um, it's, yeah. Once, once you set the head position, at, you know, at the end of your posture check, you know, before you raise your bow, we do the posture check. And I'm setting knees, hips, my torso, shoulders, and head. So once I set it, I don't move it. It doesn't move even in the follow through. It does not move. Yeah. One of the things we, we did at compound camps and we got it from Coach Kisikli, our national head coach is take a like a red solo cup and put some water in it and put it on their head yeah <laughs> yes that brings awareness you're getting feedback from that cup it doesn't take long at all and that head will be perfectly still <laughs> yeah i wonder why <laughs> yes <laughs> that's gotta be what well, brings awareness that's that's what the cues coaching cues are all about is to bring awareness to the student 
of some issue, some posture issue or uh, mental issue. I'd like to add one, one uh, step. And, and for me, it's a step before the, all the other steps that have been talked about here in terms of uh, setting your posture. And that's the, the step that begins in your own head when you're getting ready to shoot. And if you think of yourself as being part of a natural system that provides energy for you to move because it's all, it's, it's all about motion. And we will have our most effective motion and our most predictable motion if we realize that the strength, and I can't think of any other word to use, it's, it's really more the power, but the, the, the strength of our motion, whatever, if, if, if it's a pole vaulter going over, over the rail, a skater who looks like they're leaning way over this way or whether the, the horseback rider, the, you know, the equestrian, the runner, the archer. You, to really be consistent, you have to do the, the word that, that Linda mentioned very early, leverage. And you can only leverage gravity at a tangent. So there has to be a predictable part of your body that gets the, 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 the power for your motion. In, in, the, in this case, it's the power to stand up there and to be steady. The core is tight, but your mind has already said to you, I'm gonna stand up here and I'm gonna pl plug myself into the power of gravity. A couple of sessions ago, I mentioned the, the movie some years ago, Gravity with, with Sandra Bullock in it and how in the, in the space shuttle at that point, they were just floating about and, and couldn't get things done. I remember, it seems like 70, probably is 70 some years ago, TVs were just out, my grandmother got one and uh, she, I get, we, we get a call one evening, I answer the phone and she says, Dick, my TV's broken. I really wanted to watch a certain program. So we lived about two blocks apart. I went up, turned on her TV, and sure enough, there was, there was no picture. Looked behind it, plugged in the cord. It worked surprisingly better. <laughs> it, it's the same. If you, in your own thinking, start off as, I'm going to plug myself into this system that provides power to do any motion. And I'm going to, and if we can do it the same way each time, then then we can really direct that emo, that motion. Mm -hmm. You can you can yeah. shoot from a horseback. You can shoot from falling off a building, as some people do in in the Denmark or whatever mm -hmm. place is, whatever. But you have to be a a certain part of you has to be at the tangent of gravity in order right. to do it effectively. So to to illustrate what Doc's saying here. Can you imagine being in the space station and trying to shoot your bow and arrow set? I actually think that's a worth a try. We got, we got I, a, yeah, weightless. Up yeah. There. yeah. yeah. How, <laughs> how fast can you travel backwards? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. Shooting in a weightless environment. Uh, yeah, can't imagine. So can we, can we just talk about how that affects the repeatability of a shot, no matter what discipline you are? Um, you know, what I, and, and just from my, my outlook on as a barebow shooter, um, my head not moving and being in proper posture is like the best draw check. You, if your alignment is repeatable, mm -hmm. the best draw check you can have mm -hmm. for somebody who can't shoot with a clicker or any kind of a trigger. But how does that also affect the compound in Olympic recurve worlds then as well? Where's, where does that play into your consistency and repeatability of your shot? Um, your sight picture, right? Your, your head being positioned the same place on top of your spine relative to your shoulders uh, is vital to having a, a repeat 
sight picture. And of course, hitting the target then as a result of that, that's your best chance to hit the target, no guarantee, but that creates your best chance to hit the target. And, and every, well, I, I worked with seven other sports last year uh, on, on my book project and everyone head position is critical. And I, and I talked with the Olympic weightlifting coach and uh, Art Dreschler. And I said, well, you know, I can, I can see Art that having your head position the same every time, uh, like an archer would help you lift the weights. He said, oh yeah. Yeah, he said, I have somebody sometimes stand in the back of the weightlifting hall and, and hold up a marker so the lifters for my team no, can know. look at that marker to keep their head position fixed. Yeah. He said one year they had uh, a weightlifting event, a major weightlifting event in outdoors, no wall to look at. And he said all the weightlifting was off because they didn't have a place to look, a place to focus their vision and therefore set their head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, well, and just to reference the weightlifting side of things, when you, the head dictates where the chest goes. If the chest is down, you're not going to get through mm -hmm. the, underneath the barbell. And, and likewise, once you do get under the barbell, like if the head is back, the barbell's going back. You're never going to be able to stand up mm -hmm. with it in, in, the, in the snatch movement where you're going ground to overhead and you have to drop underneath the bar. Um, it's yeah, and uh, your doesn't matter what the sport is. Golf, you know, mm -hmm. head movement, head mo the head's got to be the same every time. Yeah. You know, it's it, it dictates where the accuracy of, of the ability to swing through the, the shot. But yeah, yeah. This, why why should we not approach archery as an athletic endeavor just yeah. like that? Oh, yeah, and and other sports can learn a lot from archers. I would believe uh, that for sure. Yeah. Um, Someone put in the chat about using stability discs, and I I do use those all the time too when they have to stand on a the two the small stability discs, yeah, one mm -hmm. under each foot, because it'll it that can be an instant posture fix, because to draw your bows and stand on those, well, one it also helps increase core strength, but you have to be standing pretty straight to stay stay on them. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen video from Mel Nichols. He has them on a BOSU ball. Some domes down to here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not quite challenged. I, I, I'm not going there yet. <laughs> yeah. And then there's some <laughs> videos of Jake Kaminsky and somebody else where they were on that one that's uh, it's got a roller and it's got a big board like a surfboard and that thing is going. Yeah. And they shoot. They're shooting at 70 meters. And just making a little teeter totter out of two by four. Uh, one year for Joad, I took a two by four, and then I put a sheet of plywood on top of it, so it was a little mini teeter totter. Mm. And I had him stand on that. And for the ones that would lift their bow up when they lifted, they automatically went on their back foot. Yeah, yeah. those are real challenging, Larry. Yeah, this. Yeah. But uh, anything not, not, like that will engage their core and auto auto it's an auto engage of their core and they'll automatically start standing up and then when they train on that for maybe you put them on it for 10 15 shots and then have them go to the ground they will <laughs> feel like they're back to what uh richard was saying they feel like they're glued to the ground they, yeah. they yeah. just an instant huge connection to the ground if you go back and forth off of that stuff. Well, yeah, what, what you've done when you get on the, the balance device is now you are activating, you're recruiting all the small yeah. muscle groups. And so when they are lit up and you get off the balance board and go to the ground, they're all active. Hmm. And so you feel just, just like uh, Steph Eastwood commented here, like you're rooted to the ground, like you're grown fast to it. Sure. Can you show that again, Larry? Uh, so people can see what it is. 
That looks like and something. What Larry's got is really hard to stand on. Oh yeah, this this hemisphere here should be bigger for old men. Yeah, that that one's really tough. But if you just go <laughs> this, to this is really difficult. Walmart and everything, you can just get the little ones in the gym. This the blow up yeah. stability discs and just get yeah. two of those, one and then don't blow them up too domed, but not too flat. One under yeah. each foot. Yeah, that's wondered. It's challenging. Does uh, just running on the treadmill? For, pardon me, not running. Walking fast on a treadmill uh, is way different than walking underground. Sure. You have to recruit a lot more muscles to keep your balance on on the treadmill. I thought you were going to say walking and shooting on a treadmill. I was going to say, where did that one come in play? I don't think. Yeah, well, it's like riding the horse and shooting your bow too. You know, you, you practice on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not suggesting new that. sport, <laughs> new division. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, we're not suggesting that one. But I, I, I think getting those balls from Walmart is a great start, or even just something yeah. simple like what Linda mentioned, just a two by four with some um, plywood on the top. Yeah, that's an age old one to make a little teeter totter. Younger shooters, yeah. especially, or or inexperienced shooters that are getting into that. Even for an, an older shooter to shoot a 300 round that way, it would still be a good, uh, you know, a, a good uh, training aid to do on a regular basis. So that's great. So the, the idea is get yourself rooted to the ground. That was such a great, a great way to, to describe it. Yeah. Um, looks like we got another comment in there. If you want to try to walk us for roller skating in order of stability disc. No roller skating, yeah. Uh, you know, I would think that just that practice or even, you know, when you walk on a treadmill or run on a treadmill and then you first get off of it, you feel kind of like <laughs> unbalanced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Imagine shooting, just shooting after that, go and walk, mm -hmm. you know, walk a fast pace for, you know, a minute, two yeah. minutes and then get off and quit shoot. You know, that would still be a, oh. a similar situation. Those muscles are engaged just from using them you go and then try to stand, they're still going to be activated, but yeah, I, I think that's, that's some good stuff. I think posture is probably one of the most commonly overlooked things amongst your clubs and not that it's not mentioned. It's definitely mentioned in the NTS. There's no question. It's just that I think it gets bypassed because we often work with younger kids. The idea of, or the idea or the ability to get them to think about posture is difficult and maybe just having these ideas that Linda and Larry mentioned, um, you know, are and and the way Doc described it, or or maybe something that they need to hear or know about to implement with their team or even the individual shooters they were working with. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, you you see it very clearly when uh, on the tight wire walker, and they have their balance bar, they're they're constantly making the correction in order to keep it the tangent of gravity. And that's the same thing as posture. If we put ourselves in a certain posture and then we, we will, con you, you won't stay there, but you're constantly making corrections. They, they could almost minute, but when you do that, and, and, and I think this, this is something we really need to add to our thinking about uh, you know, the, um, uh, what's the term we use when people flinch when they shoot and all that. Uh, Target panic. Target panic, trigger panic, target panic. It's, you know, it's all the same. When, when you realize you, you have this whole system that's out there for you to use so you don't have to be fully dependent on what's happening. You're, you're there when it happens. You're there when the bow shoots. And if things are positioned correctly, you, you, you can have a consistent uh, outcome. Mm -hmm. whether you're walking the tight wire or pole vaulting what larry what, what wasn't your son, son a, a pole vaulter no 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 todd played uh soccer and tennis okay i, I thought he maybe did pole vaulting but when you, uh, when you put that staff in there <laughs> and, and at the at, right at the at the tangent of the gravity is when that person can really move the no other time their 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 their, their, yeah. their trajectory is going to be off. 
Yeah, I love I, I love the idea of, of thinking of yourself as part of the system that is actually shooting the bow. You know, you're our, thinking our older brothers that present process thinking. didn't have to think about that. They they didn't they didn't have science that was telling them that they weren't part of the system. They didn't know anything different. They were part of the system. They weren't even thinking system. <laughs> they may not even been thinking, but they made it happen. We wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. So true, and that's why we're talking about it. It's because it need people need to know about it. They need to hear about it. Mm -hmm. yep. So. Anything else you guys want to touch upon with, with posture and the, the cues that go along with it? I think we did pretty good for. No, exactly I think that pretty much covers minutes. it. Yeah. So too. So we will uh, watch the announcement on the Facebook page for next week's topic. And we'll probably continue along this process. Um, and likewise, watch the Facebook page for our upcoming classes. We have developed a uh, outline for, the target panic shooting through target panic um and that's going to be that's an exciting class i can't wait mm -hmm. um that we get to put that class to test because there's so many people that struggle I, and myself included when i switched to barebow i had no idea like i i could shoot compound all day long i could shoot olympic recurve all day long i wasn't doing it right in in retro i could shoot it good but i still wasn't doing it right when I went to Barabo, I had no idea how much I was actually shooting in the wrong way because I'd get to tip of the arrow in there and I just wanted to let it go. And you can shoot some real good scores with little like mini drive-bys with Barabo, which I kind of got good at the first year, still wasn't doing it correctly. It wasn't until I took the level four with Coach Beck and with, Co with Coach Lee coach guy Kruger and started to learn the, the true software to the system that I was like, Oh, it makes sense. And <laughs> you know, it's just, it is a night and day. Now when I go back and play with an Olympic recurve or shoot a compound, it is night and day of ease night and day. I can't even explain it. Mm -hmm. And the system works. It just, there's no question the system works. So that's what this, this course is designed for shooters who struggle with target panic. They struggle with punching the trigger, punching the thumb buttons, yanking through back tension mm -hmm. release. Um, Olympic recurve shooters who can't get the string off their fingers, can't get through the clicker. Um, there's just so many, there's so many symptoms yep. that affect people in so many different ways. Yep. So we've laid out some basics, basic skills to help you uh, work through that and develop a better game. Yeah. Yeah. Address all the issues. Not, yeah. not just, it's not just up here. There could be some physical issues that oh, yeah. with, with form um, and proper fit that are affect that that's the foundation problem, how it even seeped into the kink in the armor mm -hmm. to begin with. So yeah. it's addressing all the issues to, to, to help shooters get through that what is definitely not a cancer to archery. It's definitely treatable and fixable for long term. Mm -hmm. So yeah. check that out. Check out the other courses. And that's about it. All right. Thank We're you all good. for Monday. joining us. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Good to see y'all. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh